Adobe has just added a massive update to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, and headlining this update is a brand new tool. But is it any good, and is it worth using if you are a professional photographer? Well, there's only one way to find that out. And I'm gonna start right now. So before we go ahead and use this brand new tool, we need to make sure that your Lightroom is up to date first. Otherwise, this tool just simply wouldn't be available. For Lightroom, because it is available in both softwares, you need to make sure it's update 8.4. And for Lightroom Classic, which is the actual software that I'm gonna be using in today's tutorial, you wanna make sure it's update 14.4. Again, otherwise you just won't be able to see it inside your editing panel. Now this new tool is called Remove Distractions, and actually it's a bolt-on tool to a tool that already exists called Generative Remove. But with Generative Remove, you'll actually have to manually select the areas to remove them. But with this new tool, it automatically detects both reflections and people, and then removes it from there. But let's see how good it actually is. And for that, we're gonna test two different photos. So the first photo is this one. It's a photo I've taken in Arches National Park. And if we go ahead and zoom in, we can see there's a few people in the background. They're really small, so it should work quite well. And then for photo two, we've got this photo of St. Paul's Cathedral, a photo I took last year. And the people are a lot bigger. It's a lot more of a crowded area with a lot more complicated backgrounds. So this is gonna be a little bit more challenging for Lightroom. Right, so let's go ahead and try photo one first. Now to find this tool, all you'll need to do in the develop panel is head over to your remove tool. And you'll find underneath this distraction removal. Now, if you click on that, you've got two options. You've got reflections and people. Now, for obviously for this photo, I'm gonna go ahead and select people. So we're gonna go ahead and click the little triangle to automatically detect. And let's see how well it's worked. So it's created with three selections here. We've got this person, got this couple and this couple. We've got a small person in the background, kind of difficult to see. Ah, and then we've got one more person here which it hasn't selected. So we'll have to manually select them a little bit later. So as you can see, it has selected all three. And simply to remove them, go ahead and click remove. Now, depending on you know, the speed of your computer as well as how quickly your internet is, well, how quickly this will work. For me, it's saying around 20 seconds. 12 seconds later. And as you can see, it's done a really good job. It's completely removed them. Now, what it will do is if you go ahead and click on that little icon, it will show you the selection area as well as it will give you three variations. So for example, we've got variation one, we've got variation two, and lastly, we've got variation three. I'll probably choose variation two, it's probably my favorite, and you'll be able to do that for each selection that this new tool has made. Now for areas that it just hasn't selected, what you'll have to do is go back into your normal remove tool and then simply add to this selection. So I'll probably select those people. We've got some people in the very far background that I might want to remove. And then lastly, we've got this last person on the top of the rock there. And again, go ahead and click remove and then you can add to that selection. And again, Lightroom will give you three variations, one, two, and three, and you'll be able to choose the best one for your photo. And as you can see, it's done a really good job. It basically doesn't look like we've done any removal to this photo, but Grant knew the people were quite small. So let's make it a little bit more challenging for Lightroom. Let's head over to photo two. Now this one's got a lot more people in it, as you can see, as well as a lot more of a complicated background with trees, plants, and overall very difficult landscape. Let's see how well it works. So what we're gonna do is head over to the remove tool and then go ahead down to distraction removal and go ahead and select people. Now this might take a, oh wow, it's actually done a really good job. It's done it quite quickly. Sometimes it takes a while to select, at least that's what I found when trialing this new tool, but it's actually selected almost everybody, I think. Um, we've got these people on the bench, let's remove them. The three people walking, it's selected them. Uh, the people sitting down, selected them. Yeah, this has done a, quite a good job. I'm actually really surprised. I thought it would struggle with this photo. Right, what we're gonna do is go ahead and click remove and see how well it works. An estimated time, around 20 seconds. That's pretty good. Many months later. Okay, so it has successfully removed them, but let's see how well it's done. Now the bench has now completely disappeared. Uh, the people there that originally were there, they've also gone. Um, it looks quite good. Now the background is looking a little bit bland. It's looking a little bit low resolution, but that's kind of natural with generative remove. But overall, I would say it's done a really good job. And if you showed this one photo on Instagram, you know, a slightly lower resolution, the likelihood people probably wouldn't even notice. So yeah, there's nothing to add to this removal. There's some very far people that's kind of semi-blocked by these plants. 
But yeah, they're very difficult to see even when we completely zoom out of the photo. So yeah, this new remove distraction tool is pretty good inside Lightroom, but of course, Write down in the comments below, how successful is it for your photo? How large are the people in your image or how large are the reflections? Please let me know down in the comments below if it's worth actually using this tool. Here is the before and here is the after. And of course, write it down in the comments below if this tutorial helped you out.